Hello, my name is Keith Parsons, and today we're going to talk about the Wi-Fi stress test. This was a vendor-independent access point analysis brought to you by Wireless LAN Professionals. Now, on the ranking. First, throughput ranking. This was who could send the most amount of data via FTP, up and down, and iperf. And here you have the rankings. Yay, we have high and low. Uh, no, you know, we've got, as you'd expect, a Soho device down there at the bottom. Next one's iPad error rankings. This is which access points were best at maintaining those video connections. Here we have ranking again, 1 through 16. And note on this one, that same Linksys that was low on the previous throughput is really high up here. Not really high, but a lot higher than it was. And part of that is, it was a Soho device. It was probably tuned to push video better than it pushed FTP. People take it home, use Netflix kind of thing, and it would, you'd expect it to be tuned that way. And so it did better that way. And then what we did is we took and uh, combined the data from throughput, the data from the IP pad video errors and combine them into a, a total score and here's our overall ranking. An overall ranking, here's our list and this is for equally weighted and you can make your own conclusion about what you see up there. This is just the results of our test. That's what we saw. So let's go on to the individual ones. I'm not, you know, I kind of whipped right through that whole ranking thing. Some people are going to take the ranking and go, woo, we were number seven, we were number two, whatever the ranking is. Those, that was just the data. But what I want to get into is how each AP compared to averages. So we see over here, the 7982 from Ruckus had this red line was way to the right of the average, meaning its red line is iPad video errors. Far to the right, it stayed with fewer errors longer than average. And its blue line, its data, was above the average line. So in video performance, it was better than average. And in data throughput performance, it was better than average. Contrast that with the Ubiquiti, which had, you know, its video performance far behind average, and its data performance also below average. And then we're going to go through a look at each of these. I'll just make some quick comments as they go by. Again, each of these is average versus what the access point did. We're going to compare throughput versus average, video errors versus average, and we'll have more data forthcoming later with pricing, spatial streams, the rest of the information. Uh, we do have packet analysis on uh, many of these uh, tests we ran, which will give us some average data rates, retry rates, etc. But for right now, let's just look at how they compared to, to average. AP 121 compared to average. Nice low line on video. When it hit its max, it kind of died fairly quickly. But up to 15, nicely done. And about average on data throughput. The Aerohive 330, again, to the right of average, better than average video, and slightly better than average on the data throughput. Now here's our Airport Extreme, way to the right of the average. Blue line is 40 megahertz, yes more than double our throughput of our average, but even when we cut it in half, it was better. Again, this was not included in the uh, average calculations. It was also not included in the rankings. I just wanted to show you where that was. Uh, Aruba 105, to the left side, almost the average there, a little less here. Uh, one of the reasons this, the two Arubas might have scored a little lower is we didn't have support from Aruba. We ended up with defaults, and perhaps the band string didn't do as well as it could. It had been tweaked and tuned. So a little excuse there for Aruba. It was running Aruba Instant, by the way, uh, without a controller. Same with uh, 135. Had a little bit better in the middle data. That's about it. Cisco, this is their uh, lower cost compared to the next ones, the 3600. The 2600, better than average data, better than average video. A nice contender, scored very well. And they're 3,600, very nice on the left side, I'm sorry, very nice on the right side, showing it hung in with video way better than what the average was. Data throughput, pretty close to average, but very good video results. HP 430, 
better than average video, better than average data. Nice little device. Their 460 didn't quite work as well. We tested the 460 a couple of times, and uh, this is where, where it ended up. Uh, when, when we tested it, this is one of the ones when we're in the room, it felt better. But then when we looked at the actual raw data that came across, it's a, basically a, right on top of our averages that we need. Junipers, again, look at the video line, really good hanging in there up until 15, and still hung in there into 20 and took it all the way to 25 on the, on the video errors. Data weight was about the same. Linksys, as we talked about, pretty good. It felt great during the test, but its video was never really above uh, average, though it felt like it in the room, and its data rate was far, far below average. Now, the Meraki's, we had two Meraki's, a Meraki 16 and a Meraki 24. They both kind of performed uh, not as much as you would expect coming from uh, that type of thing. We had Meraki engineers remotely in tweaking it and giving the, the configs. Um, they had a little tough time trying to get it to go down to 20 megahertz because they like to default to 40. So perhaps this was some uh, issue with their 20 megahertz channels, but the data for both the 16 and the 24 uh, average, fairly average on throughput, but their video support a little down, and it could have been again how it was tuned, uh, whether or not it was tuned to support video. The Ruckus 7982 was our overall winner uh, with great video and above average on the data throughput. And Ubiquity, uh, you know, this is the new Ubiquity Pro. It's a two radio, uh, they usually only had a single radio. Uh, this is brand new, I just uh, picked it up couple weeks before the test, it didn't have any band steering, um, it had a count. So the first 15 went to one, the next 15 went to another one. So in the results, we never got enough to, to use multiple frequencies. So all of this data was only on 36, on channel 36. And finally, we have the Xeris. Uh, Xeris above average on the data set, a little above on the low end of the video, and then a little on the top. I think uh, it was a little surprising. This is a, a big eight uh, radio array, and we had them turn off only two. So there's only two radios, one on channel 11, one on channel 36. Um, and the difference, and some people have seen, maybe seen Xeris's uh, wall of iPads, but those iPads are powered, and a powered iPad uses data differently than an unpowered iPad as far as Wi-Fi is concerned. So there you go. There was our test. It's taken, well, I don't know, four weeks of my life, uh, many tens of thousands of dollars of equipment, and lots and lots of time to come up with this vendor-independent test. The goal of which was just to say, can we do like the bridge? Can we take and use the same parts, the same room, the same iPads, and find out is design different from AP to AP? You have my contact information. If you have any feedback, go ahead and uh, drop me an email at keith at wlampros.com. And of course, I have to you know, put the obligatory little ad in there. If you'd like to run these tests in your own facility, either as a vendor or as a school or as an office, we have the equipment. We'll come and run the test with you. So thanks for watching and stay tuned to more tests coming from Wireless Land Professionals.